Okay, so I'm gonna do experiment one with my micro bit and my breadboard and my header. So I'm gonna use a blinking, I'm gonna make a blinking LED. So LEDs are small, powerful lights are used in many different applications. To start off, we will work on blinking an LED, the basic introduction of microcontrollers and building circuits. So hopefully you were successful with Hello World or Hello Microbit. This is the next step. That's right, it's as easy or as simple as turning a light on and off. It might not seem like much, but establishing this important baseline will give you a solid foundation as we work toward more complex experiments. All right, so the parts needed is the micro bit. So I have my micro bit right here. And you need your micro USB cable, which I have. You need the breakout, this, um, this red and black piece here, which I had sent home uh, connected, and you need your breadboard. You need a jumper wire, so it comes in one of these, and the color doesn't really matter for this particular experiment. So you just need one of these jumper wires. So I'm just gonna pull out the first one that I grab a hold of here. And um, you have to be careful because there is actually a zip tie, I forgot about that part. So if you're gonna cut those, uh, you wanna be extra cautious that they don't snip the wires. Okay, so hopefully you were able to get your zip tie off. You can throw that away, you're not gonna need it. So I'm just gonna grab one of the jumper wires and I'm going to put the rest of them in the bag so they don't get lost or bent or broken. Okay, so we've got the jumper wires. And then we also need an LED and the color doesn't particularly matter. So I'm going to grab, let's see what color am I gonna grab here? It's my box miss missing LEDs. Oh, here they are, they're in the silvery pack. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna grab an LED out. I wonder what color you're gonna do. I'm gonna grab a blue one. All right, so I have a blue one. And the last thing you need is a hundred, I mean a hundred ohm resistor. And the resistors, there are the ones that look like they have sort of the black and brown stripes. And then there's the one with the orange. The orange is a 10,000. And the black, brown, and gold striped are the hundred ohm. So I'm gonna grab a 100 ohm resistor. So go ahead and get all the materials that you need. So you should have your micro bit, your breadboard, your header, an LED, a jumper wire, a 100 ohm, OHM, ohm resistor. Okay, so um, you should have all of those parts in your, in your kit. Now you can read about light emitting diodes, the LEDs, um, and how to use a breadboard, and, but I'm not gonna click on that in this tutorial video. Okay, so introducing the micro bit breakout. The, to extend the functionality of the micro bit beyond what is already on the board, we developed a micro bit breakout, it gives you more connectors. And this breakout board is much easier to use all of the pins available on the micro bit edge connector in a more user-friendly way. We also broke out ground and VCC or 3.3 volts for your convenience. The breakout board lines up with the pins of the breadboard and we recommend using a full-size breadboard with this breakout to give you enough room to prototype circuits on either end of the bre breadboard. What that means is they're gonna have you put the header in the middle, and that way you can do your circuit this way or that way. And for durability's sake, insert the breakout pins about halfway in the breadboard so there is some port on the board for when you insert a micro bit and or pull it out. So when you we're given this, it came in here. You have to pull it out, try to pull it straight out, keeping it supported. What they're doing, what they're suggesting is you put it in about halfway down. So if you see the 20, you can kind of go a couple of spots down from there. And um, we're gonna push it in and I'll show that to you in, in one moment. A light emitting diode or an LED will only let current through in one direction. So the power goes in and then the power goes out. So think of an LED as a one-way street. When current flows through the LED, it lights up. Okay, so this is the one that they're showing, blue, the red one, and I have a blue one here. When you're looking at the LED, you will notice that its legs are different lengths. So if I hold mine up here, I think you can see one is longer than the other one. 
The long leg is the anode, and it's where the current enters the LED. So the current comes in the long part, and this pin should always be connected to the current source, meaning the electric source. The shorter leg, the cathode, is the current's exit. This short leg should always be connected to a pathway to ground. LEDs are finicky when it comes to how much current you apply to them, meaning how strong the electricity is. So too much current can lead to a burnt out LED, which we don't want. To restrict the amount of current that passes through the LED, we use a resistor in line with the power source and the LED's long leg. So the power is gonna come in, it's gonna go through the resistor, which kind of consumes or eats up some of the electricity, and then the, what is left over, the, which didn't get eaten up, is gonna come out the other side. It's gonna get passed into this long leg of the LED. It's gonna pass through, light up the LED, and then come out the shorter side. Okay, so too much current can lead to a burnt out LED. We don't want that. Uh, so use a resistor in line with the power source and the LED's long leg. This is called a current limiting resistor. With the micro bit, you should use a 100 ohm resistor. We have included a baggie of them, so you should have that in your bag. All right, so are we ready? We do have polarized components, which means there's a positive and a negative, and the sides do matter. So pay special attention to the component markings. So if you look on the LED, it's going to be hard for me to show you in the camera, I believe, but hopefully you can see it um, on your own that the side that has the short leg, it's probably very difficult for you to see. The short leg is flat. You could feel it with your hand. The short leg is flat and that is the negative side. Okay, so you can see the picture here. We've got the negative is the short, the negative sign, short leg, flat side of the LED. So make sure you pay special attention to where the short leg goes in the flat edge. Components like resistors need to have their legs bent into 90 degrees in order to correctly fit the breadboard sockets. So these are gonna get bent. I don't particularly want you to cut them because uh, other students will use them even though it says you can. So if it was your own micro bit, you bought your own kit, then you can cut it, but please don't cut these. We will bend them when you return them. Please try to straighten them out as best as you can. All right, so you are going to use this wiring diagram for the experiment and um, then we're going to run our script. So I'm going to show you how to set mine up. If you can't see, you can just click on the image, and if it's still not big enough, you can click again, and it'll really zoom in, okay? So here I can see that there's a 20 on the breadboard. I've got my header already out, so I'm going to go to the 20, and I'm just going to match as best I can what they have here. So 21, 22, and it looks like it's in 23, and it's one row away from the center, so we have some support. All right, so I've got 20, one, two, three, and almost in the center. I'm gonna line up all of my pins. Oh, let's see. So I counted 20, one, two, three, and I am one row away from the center. And you wanna be careful that you're not tilting it. Everything's lined up perfectly. And I showed you the trick, I think, in class. So try to make this at 90 degrees. And then what I do, because these can be kind of sharp on my finger, I put a pencil on the side, on the top there. And with my thumb in the back, my thumb is in the back here, this one, is holding it so that it stays straight up and down and it's not getting angled. And then I push down with several fingers on the pencil and insert the header into the breadboard and it takes quite a bit of force to put it in there. I'm gonna put it on the table so that I have more leverage. Okay. Takes a little bit of force to get it down in there, but uh, it should go in and hopefully you didn't bend any of the pins in that process. All right, and then you'll notice that we've got GND, which is ground, and you can see it in the wiring diagram, GND, GND, that is ground. And so here's the wiring diagram. So you've got something that says um, 3U3 or uh, kind of looks like EA. It's 3V3. Three, three um, but anyway, the next one down where it says zero, and you hopefully can see that on yours, you're going to put the resistor in front of it. So... You're gonna take the resistor and place it in the pin right on that same, there's like a cent central uh, trail 
closest to the header is where you're going to put your resistor, right next to the zero. So you have to push that in firmly. Again, I'm going to put mine on the table so I have some leverage. And you can, should feel it just insert down in there, and it's kind of sticking up. Then you're going to hop over the, the center part, and you're going to put it into a pin that's straight across from it. In this particular diagram, they put it two rows in. So you, here's where you do have to bend your wires, and then you can put that in. You could have bent it in the beginning, and then you could have put them both in at the same time. So it should look like that. So you see mine is sort of bent. I've got it right in front of the zero and then two over. And then the next part is the LED. Now you have to make sure that the resistor is in line with resisting the power to the LED. Okay. So you can see that the pin is lined up in line with the, the LED right here. Okay, so you want to make sure that the resistor is stopping the power that's going into the LED. Let me put, I'm going to put it on the table again. So the long leg should be the one that's lined up with the resistor because that's where the power comes in. All right, so it's hard to tell, but the flat side, the flat side is not in line with the resistor. The flat side is away from the resistor. All right, so that's all you have to do for the plugging in bit for now. Um, and we're going to uh, follow the rest of the directions here in just a moment. Okay, the last part is we have to put the micro bit into the header. So if you look on the back of the header, there's a slot right here, and the metal part of the micro bit is going to go in there. Make sure that you put your thumb or have some support so when you push it in, it takes a bit of force so that you don't bend the pins as they're connected to the breadboard. You could have also put the micro bit in the header before you put it on the breadboard. Um, so I'm going to push that in here. Try to push it in as straight as I can. With a little bit of force and giving it support so there we go so that's you can see it's in that slot okay next up uh, we're going to start doing our make code so then you want to launch your make code um, and you're going to follow these directions in here of setting up your digital write pin your pause your digital write pin and pause follow all of these directions in here i'll let you read through them as you go and i will come back as soon as i finished uh, putting my code together I just noticed that, uh, and I didn't give you the instruction, the black line on the wiring diagram right here, this is your jumper cable. So your jumper cable goes from the short end of the LED, so you line that up uh, between the LED and your header. So you line that up, um, you put the jumper right after the short end. So if we go short end back to the header, you put the jumper there, and then you connect it back to ground so if you remember on the header, there's that white part and it says ground. So you're basically lining the short up, short end up with the ground. So we're making a we're making a circuit. A circuit is like a loop. So it goes from here, the power goes in spot zero, goes to the resistor, comes out the resistor, goes in the long end of the LED, goes through the LED, goes out the short end of the LED, goes this way to the jumper wire. And then the jumper wire comes back to ground. Remember the short end of the LED, that, that negative is going to go to the ground. Okay. And then in case you didn't read this, when you're, when you're doing the make code, you have to make sure that you're going to turn off the LED array for the micro bit because otherwise these lights might um, do something funky from the micro bit. So, um, it also points out that the, the space labeled P0 is not used by the LED array, but the spots labeled P3, pin 3, pin 4, 6, 7, 9, and 10 are used for the LED array on the micro bit. It might things go, make things go wonky. 
So you want to go to LED more, LED enable false, and that's going to turn off the LED array on the micro bit so it doesn't mess with your blinking LED light. Uh, the other thing to notice is it says you can use a one as on and a zero as off. So one is on, zero is off. Nothing, it's off. One, it's on. You have power. All right, so that's when we're using our digital right. And the code that you use, this here, P0, pin zero, that's where we have our resistor lined up. It's with the zero on the header. Okay. All right, and what you should see after you finish your code is it blinks on and off for one second intervals. And the reason it's one second is because we have 1,000 milliseconds. Milla means thousands. We have 1,000 milliseconds, which is one, one second. All right, so I'm going to show you what it looks like when I put this code into my make code and then I download it to my micro bit. Okay, so your code should look like this. If you had trouble finding it on start to turn it off LED, you can go to LED and then the more button pops up right here in purple. And that's where I got the uh, let LED enable false and that'll be turning off your LED screen. And if you're having trouble finding the pins, you click on advanced and you go down to pins and that's where you get the blocks that say digital right pin P0200 is off. Okay, and if you're having trouble finding the pause button, that's in basic, and you can scroll down to pause. Now, another trick is if you press on the block and then you press control C, that'll copy it. And if you press control V, it'll pop up and you have a copy. So you don't have to drag over and find it each time. You can just copy paste. So on start, I'm gonna disable. So enable false, turn off the LED display, the LED array in the center of the micro bit. And then P0, I'm gonna turn that off with a zero. I'm going to pause. This drop down says one second, which is 1,000 milliseconds. And then digital right pin P0 to one, and that's also 1,000. So that's it. That's all you have to do for this particular code. And it should show that it's blinking. So it's coming out and turning on and turning off. You can't really see the LED, but the micro bit is sending a current on, off, on, off. Okay. So I'm going to download. I, I named mine blinking LED. I'm going to press the download button. And I'm going to plug my micro USB into my micro bit, which is plugged into my header. Make sure that it clicks when it's plugged in there. Okay, I'm going to show in folder. It's just now noticing that I plugged it in here. So in downloads, I have microbit blinking LED, the hex, and my microbit is plugged in. I'm going to take my microbit blinking LED, click, drag it over to where it says microbit drive, and I'm going to let go. It says copying microbit blinking LED hex. And you can see it's kind of blinking fast as it's loading, and it's running. My LED is blinking on and off. And now it says, Whoa there, be careful, which is some of the uh, images you've got. In the future, be sure to eject your removal device in the files app before unplugging it. Uh, I'm not sure if that just might mean that our cables are loose. Uh, I wonder if you can keep everything on the table and make sure that it's not um, getting pushed in. The other thing to notice is when you drag the file into the micro bit, it, it kind of like disappears. It sort of reloads. Um, so I'm not sure if that's an automatic message. I did send a message to SparkFun who I bought the microbits from, but mine is working, it's flashing. So the program did get downloaded over there. All right, good luck to you.